Let's talk some Ethan Utley. Why was he so key? And the Vols pick him up. No surprise. We had that projected long ago. But you don't want to lose that type of player who's a four-star defensive lineman who is probably an interior defensive lineman and is okay with that, has mobility to get up the field, and is an in-state guy. That's not the guy that you want to lose. It's just a bad look. What do you make of the pickup there? Caleb Calhoun. No, I think this is um this addresses a huge need for Tennessee football because next year, after this year, Tennessee's losing Amari Thomas, Elijah Simmons, and Omar Norman Lott. All three of them are out of eligibility. On top of that, James Pierce. I mean, Dave, if he's healthy this year, there's a 100 percent chance he's leaving for the NFL, right? Yes. Unless yes. unless something else breaks. In NIL, which I don't think it w- will, that allows another level of money. But I don't think we're anywhere close to that. But I do want to provide that one caveat. Because I didn't think this time last year you'd be able to pay and keep a Cooper Mays, who may just be the league minimum, right? So unless something breaks I'm not aware of, yes, I'm 100% with you. Yeah, because I think he's going to look. I think James Pierce is going to be first-round draft pick. Yeah, so... and that's a $40 million contract. That's a lot different than $950,000 a year minimum. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so it's, it's, you don't turn that money down. So I think he's gone. So I just named four guys who will for sure be gone. Three of them will be key to the rotation this year. And you think Elijah Simmons could be the fourth. If he ever just got it figured out, he could be elite. So we're talking clear losses. This guy, Ethan Utley is a gigantic pickup because he can address either void. He's kind of that, and this is kind of a new thing. I see it a lot more in Rodney Garner, Tim Bink's system. Do you ever notice that? I call it the hybrid defensive tackle. The the guy that can line up at edge or in the middle on on the interior. I think that's what they expected Dominic Bailey to be. He hasn't reached that level yet. It's kind of what Caleb Herring was when he was at Tennessee and Jaquain Blakely his last year. And they really haven't had it since. I think they would like more of those guys. I think they expect Bailey to do that this year. Ethan Utley could be that. He, He kind of would... If he got there in 2025, he would sit, which he will, he would sit behind Bailey for a year and then he could fill that void immediately, which is huge. Now, the concern is I looked at some of his tape. He mostly lined up at end. And and, and Dave, in some of the tape, he was a little bit slow off the snap to me sometimes. Um, so I well, that's think fine he, because it sounds like he's going to be an interior lineman anyway. Um, so that's what I think. I think they're going to put weight on and have him play on the interior. Yeah, I don't expect every guy to be quick twitch. If everybody had it was quick twitch, then you wouldn't be elite. That that makes me think he's going to play on the interior even more so. And um, yeah, I I do like his size though, in that I think he could still be a, a pass rushing uh, type of guy that comes in on long down and distance. But it, it, you just there there aren't. I don't. I was looking at the class, and we're going to get into the other mid state players that Tennessee needs to really target. And I'm going to have a list of names for you, but it's not a great class in state. As a matter of fact, if you didn't have George McIntyre, I would say it's just a bad class in state. If, if you didn't have the five-star quarterback, you would look at this and say, I'm not real crazy about this class for the first time in a few years in Tennessee. So you certainly don't want to lose whatever you have, but it's not a great in-state class. And it, it makes me wonder, I'm going to give you a little bit of credit, if if some people are being a little bit harder on the mid-state guys because they haven't panned out, if they're being judged harder. And again, we're going to get to those names, but you, you may be on the front end of a trend here. I'm not ready to say that yet, but you might be on the front end of a trend. How's that for a kind of sort of compliment? Wow, here comes Dave with the Caleb might have been right a year ago when he said something. Just take the kind of sort of compliment. Just take it. <laughs> Um, I, that's, that actually is possible. And I never thought about that because Nashville, it's gotten even bigger than it has when I first said it. So you would think there would be more highly touted recruits. And if you notice, there is more that the other portions of the state, you know, Chattanooga, Knoxville and Memphis and Jackson, like the other, they are rivaling Nashville in terms of numbers of elite, highly touted players this year. Right, Dave? Like there is still, there's more talent. I think what you meant to say is there's more, there's actually a good bit of talent across the state, just not as much in the mid state as has been highly ranked in the past few years. Uh, I don't like it as a whole. 
I mean, I, you're not a fan I think of it's a da- I think it's a down year of all. I don't care if you're in the Tri Cities or you're in Southwest Memphis. I mean, I think it's a I think it's a down year. But that's it's not to say that you know Patrick Willis was supposed to be a down prospect and he ended up doing great things. Just if you didn't have the McIntyre, you'd be looking at this class at a bunch of four stars that are borderline four stars. Um, and but I, th- I think Utley's a very good player. I think that Tennessee with McIntyre has has taken care of that and what they they're able to do. Here's the other thing about McIntyre: how much of Utley is because McIntyre recruited him? So go ahead and click the like button if you hit if you like McIntyre. If you hit McIntyre, I mean. I know that Nico Ia Maleava was supposed to do a ton of recruiting, but he really didn't. He had volleyball and he was switching high schools and he was doing all kinds of stuff. As far as the periphery, McIntyre's already had maybe as big of an impact on Tennessee recruiting by helping Utley come along and by helping other guys come along. I mean, the McIntyre, no matter what happens, with his playing time is going to have a positive effect on Tennessee's football program. He's already come out and said, I'm going to recruit like crazy for you. I, I believe he is recruiting like crazy. I don't know if it's going to have, I don't know if the Utley pickup is related to that though. Um, one, well, I, I, we got to bring, yeah, I see, don't, if you don't, if you don't, but let me ask you this question, maybe not directly related, maybe not McIntyre calls him and says, Hey, you've got to make this commitment now, but let's, let's say you're Butch Jones and you don't have the highest rated quarterback prospect in the area. Who was that guy? It was sort of kinda, you know, the guy who's playing for the, the Jaguars now, cause he had ties to Tennessee. When you don't get that guy, it's a bad sign. So if they don't have McIntyre committed, just like they didn't have Trevor Lawrence committed, who grew up a Tennessee fan, I think it's a bad sign, and you don't get other guys that are committed like Utley. I think they wait and see, why is this guy waiting? He has such strong ties to Tennessee, or he's in-state. Why is he waiting? I don't think you get Utley if you don't have McIntyre. Okay, that's a different kind of talking point, then. You're saying, like, the... You're saying not it's not that getting my see, I don't think getting McIntyre helps. I but I would agree with you not getting McIntyre can hurt with other recruiting because you're right, there'd be a red flag. But if let's put it this way, if Missouri swoops in and gets a McIntyre, a guy that you want in your home state, that is a bad, bad look. That's bad. That's bad. And so I think you're right. You're right. In in that point, it's necessary. I think McIntyre. First of all, let's McIntyre's from Brentwood, at least from Nashville. The Nashville region is so huge in popularity. People think it's not like, like in the nineties, I'm sure all the top recruits from Nashville knew each other, but like, and also even similar to Atlanta in the nineties, and we could talk to Fred White about this. I'm sure Fred knew every single highly touted recruit out of Atlanta in the, the George, North Georgia area when he was coming out. I doubt Atlanta recruits all know each other now because there's just so many of them. And Nashville's so big now. I don't think there's that connection between a kid at Brentwood and a kid at Innsworth in Nashville. Mm, um, I, don't I don't think know. that connection is there. I uh, don't know. I'd have to hit the camp circuit again. I can tell you it a, was it was it was definitely there. Now. Yeah, it was it was there probably more in regions if 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 you if you want to go along those route routes. Don't forget though, they all do play summer seven on seven passing camp together. So I mean there's there's a lot of that. I think the upper elite guys from any town, I think the top 15 or 20, they all know each other. And when I say town, okay, get cut me a little bit of slack. Like Marietta is a town in and of itself. Um, you know, I, w- and- I was thinking Metro. Okay. Cause thing in basketball for a minute, do you think the top, t- do you think the top, do you think all the five-star recruits in basketball out of New York know each other? And basketball? Yeah, let's just say yes. basketball in New York. You think they all New York's too big. They don't know each other. I think the I think the top five or ten do. Yeah, I really do. I, 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 I that's what I've always heard from basketball. I I think they do. I, I think there's an upper echelon. I don't think the top fifty know each other. Let's put it that way. 